When a student tells me that they have a hard time being understood when they speak or sing, I would, of course, speak to them about diction. Most people know they need better diction, but they don't really think about the separate pieces that achieve it together. I break it into three parts not enough air supply, imprecise word formation, and being unclear about what you want to say. I address air supply in detail on my segment on breathing. We will get into the nitty gritty of word formation later on, but right now we will address being unclear about what you mean to say because that's the easiest of the three to address. Many cases of mumbling occur when people don't actually know what they intend to say or sing. With any performer, the first thing I check in a case of mumbling is do you know exactly what word and which note you intend to sing? Have you firmly decided both of these things if you've written it yourself? If it's another person's composition, are you having trouble remembering the music? You would be shocked at how many speakers and singers are periodically incomprehensible because they have not made a decision about what they intend to say or sing. Or just as troublesome, they haven't memorized it enough. Always make a choice and stick to it, at least until you firmly change your mind. On to good diction. In general, when I hear directors give direction to speak more loudly and clearly, most amateur actors or singers will heavily spit out their consonants, thinking this will solve the problem. I know because it's something that I've totally done myself. While on occasion, a heavier consonant can be the correct answer, it is frequently an incomplete answer and doesn't address all of the ways someone might not be understood. The root of the problem often lies with the closed jaw position and the subsequent horizontal interior shape of the mouth, particularly in American English. <clears throat> Most Americans will mumble their words with the flat tongue and not a very little vertical clearance between the tongue and the roof of the mouth. This leaves little space for a strong air supply and very little space for the differentiation of vowels. If your tongue doesn't have adequate space to form vowels, then words start to sound like each other. The difference between vowels is often slight. Take, for example, the difference between ah and uh. For most people, the difference between these two vowels is the slight lowering or raising of the middle back portion of your tongue. If your jaw is not open enough, then there isn't much vertical space for the tongue to shift. So the vowel ends up coming out to a listener as if they were the same vowel. So knowing that I need to think about maintaining a tall space inside my mouth while I perform, I have a tendency to think of public speaking and singing as a slightly different language than spoken American English. This is really quite hard until you practice and become comfortable with it. Most people have been speaking the way they speak for years without ever thinking about it. They have habits about language, which are evident in accents and mannerisms. There are a number of ways in which I try to get my students to think about this taller space inside their mouths. And I have one particular metaphor which seems to work most of the time. Imagine, if you will, that the content that you are sharing with your audience is a gift. That song or presentation is a present, literally, that you want to give to your audience. You want to give your audience some soup. Now, how much of this soup can you give them? Well, it depends, of course, on how much you make, how much sound you produce, but it also depends on the container that you have to put it in. If you only have a small container, no matter how much soup you make, you can only give your audience a small amount. That's just like your voice. No matter how much sound you produce, if your mouth is too closed, you can't actually let it out. So a dropped jaw allows us to let more sound out, and a vertical mouth allows us to differentiate our vowels clearly because there's adequate space for our tongue to make sound. This gets us most of the way there. The last step is making your gift pretty. 
If you were giving a real gift, you would wrap it or put a bow on it. If you want your words to be understandable, then you have to wrap your consonants around your vowels. The bigger the gift, the longer the bow. The bigger the vowel, the longer your lips and tongue have to reach around the vowel shape in your mouth. I mean this exactly as I say it. You have to maintain the vertical space inside your mouth. It feels like a tube of air. And make your tongue and lips reach or wrap around this space to make a firm consonant. It feels, when you perform, like you're declaiming Shakespeare. A dropped jaw and tall vowels allow space for the air and sound to come out. It should feel sonorous and grand when you are doing it right. Give your voice to your audience without shyness. Drop that jaw and make space to form those vowels. Even if it feels bizarre, it's the only way to let your true voice come out.